Welcome you two friends and family to today's gardening edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So it's actually Monday here today. No, I'm not ahead on videos and I need to finish up this video that I actually started on Saturday. So I had a beautiful video guys, but something happened to the first half of the video. So I'm gonna give you like the 30 second recap. So I saved my cardboard from all my Amazon and other deliveries all year long. I keep it in a big box in the garage. I just cut down all my boxes as I receive them. And then I use them usually in a double layer in the garden paths in my garden. And then I get two bells of straw, very large bells of straw. And that keeps me from having to weed the garden paths and lets me really put my attention on weeding, fertilizing and maintaining my actual vegetable and flower gardens. So I'm gonna take you out here this morning. I'm gonna turn around, it's very wet. It's about uh, quarter after eight in the morning. And even though my grass was just mowed on Friday, y'all, it's really growing. So it's looking really good. We are forecast to get some heavy rain and wind about one o'clock. So this morning I thought, well, I could up pot some of my seedlings, but instead of doing that, and I will speak about doing that in, in this video you're about to see, I'm gonna actually get in the car. I'm going to head to Big Town <laughs> and look for things at Lowe's. Uh, I may pop in Walmart, just see what I can find in the way of potting soil for up potting. And then I may run over to Rural King and see what kind of fruit items they have because they had a pretty good selection a couple weeks ago and I probably should have gotten it then but the thought of trying to keep it alive uh, was a little bit challenging. So it's like my water bucket <laughs> and I will share my my rain barrel is completely full to the top of course. <clears throat> Does it only takes one good rain to fill up 50 gallons, so that's super helpful. All right, so walking back over here, I've been weeding some flower beds, but I want to share with you where I am here on my veggie pod. So, still have my great chives. This is chamomile. I'm sorry, chamomile. And this I'm pretty sure is borage, which I will have to pull out because it's very invasive. But do you see what I see, guys? The lettuce we planted is definitely coming up. So what I am thinking of doing, I will have to close the veggie pod because we're also forecast to get hail and I don't want it hurting the tender plants. But I do have open spaces still, plus I do have a way that I can keep my plants protected. So I think I'm going to start buying. So today is April 25th, our frost-free day. I'm gonna go ahead and close this because my luck, it will hail before I get back. Our frost-free day is the 20th of May. So I am kind of hoping that I can use my cold frame and my veggie pod and um, my plant lights and just go and see what I can find today. So I thought I would bring you along and since I no longer film while I'm driving, <laughs> let's go and see what is available. So I will see you in a few minutes when we arrive in town. Stay Before tuned. Before we head into town, I wanted to show you, these are sugar pie pumpkins, which they're about, oh, I don't know, six, seven inches tall. Uh, my tomatoes are doing very well. These are Romas. My jack-o'-lanterns are doing well. I think everything else at this point, other than these items can stay. Um, I do need to do some thinning as well, but I need to get some smaller containers. The only thing I have are like six inch in diameter pots, but I do want to get those transplanted. And I'm also debating, here are my 
if y'all have been following along, um, it's now above the trellis. These are my yellow cherry tomatoes. I don't see any blooms on them yet, but they are oh, six or so inches tall with multiple, multiple leaves. So I'm wondering if I should pull out my seed starting system, go ahead and pot these up, leave them sort of in a semicircle around on the table so they're still getting the benefit of the light, but go ahead and starting some additional seeds. So let's head on into town, but first you're going to be seeing the garden project that I did. So stay tuned. Y'all, I'm not sure what happened there. So I did buy some raised bed soil and I'm going to be working on and I'll share um, at the time that I do it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to speed myself up and I'm just going to show you how I distribute the straw what it looks like and that's why I have a little fence around my garden my fence has really deteriorated but I think I can make it another <laughs> another year they no longer make this fence I've been super pleased with it I would replace it with the same thing but as I said it's no longer made so I may need to come up with a different solution for next year so let me put myself on fast speed and I'm going to get this knocked out. It is an absolutely gorgeous day guys and if you're wondering why I look tan I share all my secrets. I did use some self tanner and SPF 50 <laughs> so hopefully I won't get burned. My issue is a lot of times I will just sweat it off and with the sun being as high and as strong as it is I may end up with a little bit of sun but I can I can hack a little bit of color. All right, let's get busy. Sorry about the tripod falling over y'all. It's a little bit breezy, but we are all finished. Now you may have been looking at that, saying two things to yourself. One, why are you putting so much straw that's really deep? And number two, why are you walking like a granny? <laughs> and I will forewarn you guys, the dry straw on top of the cardboard is as slick as glass and I did not want to fall down on camera because I've done that before. And the other thing is this straw will compress. If you need to really be working in your beds after you've put the straw down and it feels slick to you, best thing to do is water it. I am gonna wait for some heavenly water to, <laughs> well, not today, uh, day after tomorrow, I'm just going to let this settle by itself. So that is why I need the little fencing because otherwise the straw would be at the neighbor's house and we don't want that, right? So, that was a lot of work. <laughs> the reason that you may have noticed also that I distribute the blocks, because it kind of comes apart in blocks, I distribute them around and then I stay bent over, is because of my back. So once I bent over, I'm going to see what else I can do while I'm down there. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go get the um, topsoil, the mineralizer, and something to spade and work this in and I will bring you back just to show you what I'm working on. I'm going to try to figure out a way that the tripod isn't continuously falling over and guys I may have to resort to a hat because the sun is intense and I really don't want a sunburn so I will see you shortly. So we'll try this angle <laughs> and see if the, tri the tripod will stay up on its <sighs> legs. So I personally have never used soil remineralizer. However, even when you're rotating crops, we know that plants are taking nutrition from the soil. That's how they grow and do well. So from time to time, you do need to amend your soil, not only with compost, but I believe with 
valuable minerals. So this is what it looks like. Kind of like a sand. I don't want to breathe that in. So what I did is I just took my digital scale, I weighed it out, and I was pleased. It, I needed five pounds. The bag is a 44 pound bag that I purchased from Azure. And if you look back on my Azure haul, I do talk about it. So what I'm going to do is I have a little cup here that will help me evenly distribute the soil remineralizer into these beds. And then I will add the uh, soil on top, the top dressing, so to speak, and then begin to work it in. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of guesstimate. Um, I'm going to start with like a cup for the big bed and like half for each of the smaller beds. So the two beds back here are actually four by 12. These are four by four. I purchased all my beds on Amazon. These plastic ones I've had for many years. They're my original garden beds. I love them because you can sit on the edge of them. So it's really easy on my back. However, I wanted bigger beds and the metal corrugated metal beds were a better buy for me. So I did add in effect eight by 12. So a little better than half again as much garden space. And you know, we've talked about not getting overwhelmed and you know, there's only so much that one person can do to um, maintain everything. But I think this is truly manageable and I wanna try growing some crops that I've either never grown or I haven't grown in many years like corn, given that there may be some challenges getting corn. So I am going to get busy here and show you how I plan to do this. Ooh, if I don't fall down. So let's start out with about a half. And given the wind and the fineness of this, I'm going to actually get in the bed and go close to the surface and just try to evenly distribute this. And we'll be working this in, spading this in, so that's not going to do it. So I don't think it's going to be a major issue. So let me get these beds remineralized, and I'll bring you back, and we'll get some soil top off and start working it in. Now that I have all the remineral remineralizer <laughs> distributed in the beds, I am going to top off my beds with some. Miracle Grow raised bed soil, specially blended for raised bed gardening. I'll show you the bag here in just a moment. No mixing required. Made with 100% organic ingredients. So I did order this from Amazon. I will try to leave a link for you in the description box. So this is what the bag looks like. It is a 40 pound bag, if you can see, and for vegetables, fruits, flowers, and herbs, 100% organic. So I'm pretty tickled with it. I wish I could call the price out for you. Um, maybe when I take a break, I will try to do that. Let me grab some scissors. And because my soil is has just been worked up and it's very dry, I have determined I'm going to put about a third of a bag on each bed of the five here and what's left over, I'll split between the two big beds in the back. Um, something like that. So, um, gosh, guys, I don't know if that's gonna suit me or be enough. So that's kinda, I mean, I really just wanna top dress it. I'm not looking to, yeah, that isn't what I'm gonna have. So the soil in the back, is um, super rich in compost, probably does not need anything. So uh, I, in fact, could use a little bit more, I think. And if I need to put some more, I will. Because there's no sense doing it halfway. Uh, I thought this would go a little further than what it's going. Start anyway. 
so probably what I will do is um, spade all this up and mix this new dirt in with the existing dirt. And it wasn't that I had any problems whatsoever growing. I just thought it was time that I top off the beds, particularly this one is low. And the tomato bed isn't low, but I kind of overloaded that bed last year, so it's probably in need of some rescue, so to speak. So I'm gonna spread out this soil, and then I'm bringing you back. I'm actually gonna film this over a couple days. And guys, I just wanted to tell you, you know, uh, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. <laughs> but, I am confident, and I apologize for the wind noise, because I'm sure you get wind noise, you know, that slow and steady wins the race. And while I can't do it all in a day, just getting all the cardboard and the straw down, the remineralizer, and distributing what raised bed soil I do have on hand, that's an accomplishment. And because it is so nice, I thought this would be a great day to do it. We are actually going to be 80 degrees today and tomorrow. This is Saturday. And then next week we're gonna have lows that are freezing lows. So it's too soon to plant, but it's not too soon to prep beds. And I don't worry guys about the straw. Someone might ask, why didn't you get wood chips? I have tried and tried. Um, Becky over at Acre Homestead had shared like a website where you can get local free wood chips, but you have to kind of take what they have. I've been unsuccessful at doing that. So I'm just gonna stick right now with my straw method. I can definitely tell you though, I'm gonna need some more raised bed soil. So I have to place that Amazon order. So I'll bring you back when I have this all done for some final garden thoughts. And then I will probably be filming tomorrow on a totally different topic. So when I say to you, you know, stay busy, this is what I mean, you know, do, do what you can when you can do it. My back will only take so much. I mean, you all are seeing a continuous film. You didn't see me go lay down, take a break. You know, I have to do that. I just can't do what I used to do. But what I do know is slow and steady wins the race. And so we're gonna win and we're gonna get the soil distributed of what I have and then make a decision perhaps on how many more bags I need. So stay tuned. Woo, slick. Well, y'all, I'm not displeased with the amount of work that I did manage to get done today. It's a good start for gardening season. I have about four weeks yet before I'll be able to plant. One of the things I thought we would do together is a pot or basically transplant into bigger pots. Some of our seedlings that are doing quite well that could use a little more leg room for their roots. So uh, that will probably be the next part of the video. Now I need to go get cleaned up. I did want to share with you the Miracle Grow um, one and a half cubic foot bag of soil was 948 and it is organic. Uh, when I ordered it probably a month ago, it is now 998 and the limit was three. So, you know, we are seeing some limits, but um, I, I really would have rather had four, but maybe I can find it in a local store as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this part of the video. Stay tuned for more. I'm standing outside here at Rural King and they do have the miracle Grow potting mix, um, potting mix because I'm going to up pot, not seed start for $8.99, but they're very small bags. Um, I will tell you all, if you've never used the Happy Frog by Foxfire Potting Soil, this stuff is amazing. So, uh, of course they don't have any sort of price on it, unless it's stuck in here. <sighs> Who knows, I'll have to check inside. So they have plenty. Um, what I've used before is the Ocean Forest brand. Oh, okay, 20. And that, that's a going rate. That's really what you're gonna pay on Amazon as well. Um, so since they have it, probably gonna get that. They do have some organic um, garden soil. And the prices, they're so bad on the prices, guys. They just don't have them. Uh, mushroom compost is $4.39. 
and not seeing any raised beds soil but um let's go inside and see what we can find i'm just gonna grab a cart but i'm probably going to go ahead and get the ocean forest um and maybe a bag of this as well because it just really makes that much of a difference in how your plants do so all the equipment too <laughs> And as you see, guys, sky's looking ominous. So we're going to do purchasing, but probably not planting today. To tell you, they are amazingly well stocked. Um, I could spend my life in one of these garden stores. So um, oh, you know what? Those are grapes, not blueberries. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, we might have to, yep, those are grapes. Uh, I did get one slicing tomato and the Bonnie plants. I'll tell you, they're five bucks a piece, but I did find the large bag of miracle Grow potting soil. I got one bag of the Happy Frog, so I'll mix these two together. I got some onion sets of the sweet onions. I am growing yellow onions already at home and uh, some rhubarb because I do not have rhubarb on my property. So I figured that was a good start. So let's go take these grapes back and I can tell you I should have purchased when I saw them a while back. Ooh, traffic jam. Because <laughs> they do not have as much as I had hoped. But we have several places that we can go and I still will be going to a local nursery or some other plants because the bonnie plants are just outrageous but for one tomato plant i'm okay with it so let me show you here we have a lot of the roses we have quite a few of the bulbs and the um, like cannas and lilies etc onions asparagus strawberries garlic And then here, I was after the blueberries filming. I'm sorry. I'm not talking to myself. It just sounds like I am. I thought I was buying blueberries, but I actually mistakenly got grapes. That will never do. That would be a funny taste in blueberry, but the blueberries look terrible. Yeah, so this does not look viable to me. So we're going to pass on that. They do have green grapes red grapes, grape grapes, and Candace grapes. I think these are supposed to be really sweet. But I was actually wanting blueberries, so we'll pass. Aside from the rhubarb, I did not find any blueberries and grapes are not what I'm interested in for this year, so that's okay. I did find some interesting seeds that I'm excited about. And also a really nice metal trellis that I think I can use for some pole beans. So let's keep going and see what other goodies we can find while I'm in town before this crazy weather starts. So this is kind of a gardening, all things gardening video, even though we won't be working outdoors today. So stay tuned for some more. If you've enjoyed today's gardening video, drop me a comment below. Where are you with your garden? I actually had such a full trunk after I went to Rural King, I decided to leave the rest of the shopping for another day so it didn't damage any plants. So um, stay tuned, there'll probably be more garden videos coming up. And as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and I'll see y'all very soon. Take care.